And the Bucks, as a reminder, are three and seven since Doc Rivers got there. And after the All-Star break and all the interviews that were conducted, it, it just feels like things might be worse. So first up, you have Doc telling your own Weitzman of Yahoo, taking a job when you're about to go on the toughest road trip of the season is not the smartest decision. I even told them that. Can we wait till All-Star break? It would have been a lot nicer. Um, I'd like to think that this was said in jest, but it's a quote, so we can only take it for what it is. Thoughts? I feel like that's just something you don't say out loud. That's that's something you realize and you understand, but you don't you don't say that out loud. You're you're an adult. You've had coaching situations before. You've had multiple opportunities. This this is now your job. So like, take it how you want. Don't put this on the players. Don't put this on the ownership. Saying it's I don't know why you're firing Adrian Griffin. Things like that. That's just you. It just it feels like he's deflecting. And I saw the whole beef with with Austin and JJ, and I see both sides there. But like Doc Rivers, again, you, you've had you're, you've had a lot of lives in the NBA. You you keep getting these opportunities, and you have a very very talented team. So I do understand the point where like this is now you're in control. You, you have yeah. the talent. You it's, it's the 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 deed is done. They fired him. This is now your situation. You can't say things like I wish you would have waited till after All Star Weekend. Like Rude. That's, they didn't, and so now you're almost making the ownership look bad by saying things like this. But I think there is still light at the end of the tunnel. I think, I think this is getting to the point where it's almost like Steve Kerr. Like they're they're saying too much. Just go out there, compete. When make the. I hope he made adjustments during this break with his staff. Got more comfortable. Uh, the Bucks. The, the Dame had a great All Star Weekend. Hopefully, oh, that's some sure. sort of momentum going to the second half of the season. But. Oh, there's a lot more, by the way. This is the tip of the ice. Yeah, it's like, Doc, it's, this, is one. It's, this isn't a smart thing to say. As somebody that's worked with Doc Rivers for five years, even though it's just a quote, I guarantee it was said in jest. With a semi, little... Semi-joking. Yeah. And, and I agree with Chandler as well. Some of these things are, are also better left unsaid. And I think the two, his two worlds clashed. I think he, was, he still... Had has a little bit of his TV job in his system, <laughs> and he probably was oversharing, trying to say something a little clever, a little yeah, but little it's, light, it's a little lighthearted. And listen, if they're seven and three and he says this, we brush past it. Fair. But because they're three and seven, you take it a little bit more seriously. And so, you know, I, I think Doc was saying this just and just. I don't think he was making an excuse for himself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm actually a, a a big Doc Rivers fan. You'll never get me to say anything negative about him. Um, very much like J.J. Redick, very much like Pat Bev and uh, people who spoke out about these issues. Doc changed the trajectory of my career. I've had my, I had my best years under his guidance. And so I know who he is as a coach. I know the type of things that he says. And so I, I, I understand this. It doesn't look good when you're three and seven. But again, if you say that and you're seven and three, he still say the same quote. Okay, so let's throw that one out. Let's go to the next one, because there's more. Uh, here we go. This is, this is also Doc Another this time one. with Sirius XM's NBA radio. Personally, I, you know, I, I'll be honest. I, I told our owners uh, when they called, I said, I think you, I don't understand why you're doing this, you know. Um, and they said, you know, one of the things they said was, well, it doesn't matter. We're, we've done it now, and um, we, we, we want you. And, and so that was a tough one. I didn't, I, that was, that's where you had the hesitation. Okay, there's no room for interpretation. That's straight from the horse's mouth. See, this, I think this is a private conversation that he had with the ownership that <laughs> should never get brought to light. Like, no matter, that, that clearly was said. Oh, and a lot of people, listen, Doc River, you're a smart guy. You're Very. a cool guy. Be like, you, 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 you know this, this is, that goes without being said. Like, if we, everyone thinks it, it doesn't mean you have to say it, right? And this is just an opportunity where, like, he can just just take all the bullets. Take the, take the your three and seven. Take it just like the, the Tyron Lue was, just like James Harden was when that trade happened to L.A. and they turned it around. Now no one talks about it. I would just stop talking about it. I would stop giving sound bites in general because this is these are all things that people know already. People assume this is it's right. it's, a, it's an awkward situation. You coaching the All Star game was weird. It should have never happened. It's a, it's a kind of a silly thing he's in right now. But also, no one had a gun to his head. He didn't have to. He didn't have to take it, and he didn't have to take the job. And so, I, I think he understands that there is potential here. They do have two absolute stud All NBA Absolutely. players. They do have a chance to win right now. So, I'd be focusing on 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 those things instead of deflecting <laughs> and and not making excuses necessarily. I but mean, come on, Lou. Kind of making excuses. This was. Yeah, this but was he's a quote. also. But again, he's also one of those polarizing coaches where <clears throat> no matter what he say. It's gonna be dissected. He's one of those personalities. He's part of the show. 
He, he's part of the NBA show. He's one of those coaches that people love to hate, that people love to hear what he has to say at the same time. You know, right. that's why he can, if he get fired tomorrow, he'd be back on TV by Friday. For he's sure. one of those type of personalities. And so no matter what he says, there's gonna be something to go go with that. And like I said, if they're seven and three, opposed to three and seven, all three of us don't really Which care. they very well could be. The next 10 games, they could go 7-3, 8-2, and then now he can say whatever the hell he wants to say. It doesn't matter because they're winning games, and that's the ultimate goal. So this is the the last of the dot card oh, there's before more. we get the players. Yeah, because <laughs> J.J. Redick um, made a few waves when he said this. The trend is always making excuses. We get it. Taking over a team in the middle of the season is hard, but it's always an excuse. There's never accountability with that guy. Mm. That one felt rough. I disagree. I, I disagree. That wasn't my experience with Doc. You know, there were there were games and situations where he came in and said, dang, I screwed that up. I really messed that up. I'll fix that and I'll be better. And there was times where he was like, y'all need to do better. Hmm. You know, and that's, a, that's, that's the balance of being a good coach. And that's also the balance of being a coach that has championship aspirations and expectations. Everybody expects Doc um, to do well, no matter what the team has. And, you know, he's been blessed to have a lot of talent. And when you have a lot of talent, you're gonna put a target on your back. You know, we said this when he first got the job. Yep. Now that Milwaukee was a, a team that can kind of go under the radar and do that thing, when you hire a Doc Rivers, that puts you in the forefront of criticism and people talking. And so, I disagree with JJ saying this. I, it hasn't been my 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 uh, experience for Doc to make a bunch of excuses. He may be talking too much, maybe doing too many interviews. But again, he's fresh off of TV. Might have some of that still in his system, but. That I just disagree with JJ on this. I'll tell you this: there, every player has a different situation and relationship with the coach, right? Sure. So this mm -hmm. does, uh, and I'll make it quick. But sorry, Conrad. This uh, <laughs> Conrad's like, shut up, stop. We gotta go. <laughs> uh, like JB Bickerstaff, to me, he's the greatest guy in the world. I've Perfect. never had him as a head coach. Clearly, there's some issues in Cleveland right now with Donovan Mitchell and other relationships with him in Cleveland. So it, it depends on on that dynamic. Yeah, we I've all I've never have played for Doc Rivers, right. but clearly with, with the way Jay's, JJ Redick is saying that there's some animosity, there's some there's some tension there between those two. Shams, the the mood with the Bucks, and I know you know things get kicked off again tomorrow, but what is it right now? Michelle, it, it literally does not matter what anyone says. This team has a championship goal. From ownership on now, this is a title or bust season. You have Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Doc Rivers. They made that coaching change at the midway point of the season because they truly believe this is a championship quality team, and that's why they went out and got Doc Rivers to win a championship. So. It literally doesn't matter what anyone says uh, internally. Like, that's what they want. That's what they're desiring. That's what they're going for. And hopefully, they, for that, their sake, they have a healthy second half of the season. They just added Patrick Beverly at the deadline. They got Danilo Gallinari in the buyout market. I know Lou is familiar with both of those guys. And Giannis Antetokounmpo, he, his voice matters the most. He told Eric Name of The Athletic that we need to stop feeling bad for ourselves. We need to stop, you know, talking here and there. Like, we need to just go out there and produce. And I think second half of the season, the relationship between Giannis and Antetokounmpo and Dame Miller, that's going to be the most important for them. We saw Dame Miller have a massive, like Chandler said, big time all-star weekend. But having the ball in his, his hands down the stretch of games, that's going to be important. But th this team, it's just about winning a championship. Well, and if they fall short of that, it, you, you, there's, there's no excuse. They're going to fall short of that. Um, <laughs> by the way, Giannis, I, Giannis is also talking a lot more these days because he had a bit of a head scratcher of an answer. So hear his his answer to something. I just, in general, I do not watch basketball. So stats, highlights, how people play, I have no idea. And I, I love it, you know. I love it when I go to the game. I have no idea who I'm playing and what they do. All right, so. But you know what's crazy? <laughs> like, I read the quote. I didn't see the interview. And at first I was like, is this guy serious? But, <laughs> but now you think it's funny. One, he's lying. Clearly he's joking after <laughs> seeing the interview. He's trolling. He's just not a good joker. But it's, yeah, it's also not very it's funny. Not because delivered. you have lost in the postseason. You haven't won a championship. <laughs> exactly. So it is weird to make jokes that kind of have some truth to it. Lou's like, wait a minute. This quote right. alone. <laughs> take away all the accolades, everything that we know about Giannis. Just this thing alone. Yep. And we want to blame Doc Rivers for everything. That's yeah. fair. Like you can't say, that at the same time of Doc Rivers, you can't go out as the as the the, the leader of the troops and say, "Oh, I like to come into games unprepared." 
I don't know who which I'm is a, which is a, which is a joking lot. or not. Which it's a, not funny because you have lost in the postseason. You haven't won anything. Which right. is a which is a which is a a, 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 Besides, a yeah. story by the way because if you guys don't know how preparing for a game work. You have scout teams, you have dummy right. teams, you go through the team's plays the day before. If you have a couple days of practice, you're going through everything they're doing. Yeah. So does he watch basketball? Probably not. A lot of us, we consider yeah, it a job. Yeah, time off. We consider not. it a job. When we're sitting at home, we're, we're catching up and binge watching something else. The but bear. when it comes to game preparation, yeah. there there's certainly scenarios where you're, you have shoot around, film, all of these things that you can't. Uh, avoid to get yeah, prepared for a game. So was he trying to say something clever? Sure, but it didn't come off. Yeah, right. and that goes into winning a championship, which obviously they they did. Uh, they did. They won yeah, a championship. Of course, but, but you don't just roll the ball out there and play. This is a, it's a free advantage watching film and playing. And again, after watching the video, he's he's clearly making a joke that's just not very funny. It's just yeah, it's the delivery. It has a lot that needs to be worked on. Um, <laughs> and now the final. Piece. Got a lot of, lot of, the Dame lot of drama piece in Milwaukee. That we have. So he was, uh, I mean, All Star <laughs> gave us a passive aggressive piece. It, well, this one feels, I don't know, it, maybe it's nothing, maybe it's just honestly a mistake. But he named his starting five of current players in the league that Dame would you know, want to play with, whatever. It's him, Steph, LeBron, oh. Katie, and Bam Adebayo. Uh, That's the issue. <laughs> Me and Lou disagree on this. He thinks there's no issue. He's, that's his it starting. feels weird. I think it's weird. It's like Jamal Murray going out there and saying yes. Joel Embiid's the best center in the NBA. And oh. Jokic, I don't care if that's what he actually thinks. It's again, it's like Dr. Rose, it's just something you don't say. It's I don't weird care. to say a lot. It's weird to say, especially when you're putting Kevin Durant and LeBron James, two guys, his same exact positions, like it's people he's got to go through this year. Right? It's a little weird. It's, it's his, a little It's weird. his list. Yeah, yeah it was, but it's, it was it's, no. It's, it's his list. It's no Luca. There's no Jokic. They're not his There's teammates. No that he just he, got he traded got, to. He got traded. He didn't go there. <laughs> yeah, but he, he had a love affair with the Miami Heat. By the way, they were following each other on Twitter. That's and true. That. He thought he, he was got going there. He got traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't have any. I don't have to tell, put anybody on my list. That's not on my list. It's my list. No, because, you would be on my list, and I think that's hurtful I, that I wouldn't be on yours. I appreciate it. No, not you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I think this is I think this is a non-story. I think LeBron is fine. Like if someone says if I fine. play for Carlisle and I say Popovich is the best coach, I don't think he cares. So if I'm if I'm but like throw in Kate, Kevin Durant in there where like Giannis yeah. kind so of. So do we want do we want guys to be honest sometimes or not? No, or I think you we, need to lie. When you, need, you, need, you need to provide, you need to support your teammate. <laughs> yeah. I think that's more important than telling your truth. Especially <laughs> this week, it feels weird. With all the shit going around Milwaukee too, Thank and you. then the guy that just got traded, that's arguably their best player, leaves their arguably their other best player out yeah. of his starting five. It's weird. It's, it's uncomfortable. Weird. It makes for an awkward situation in the locker room feelings. when you don't have to do that. Giannis probably hadn't even heard this. Well, well, he has he now. Heard it. He's this now. This is nothing. Everybody to me. hears everything. These guys that say they don't follow, they're off social media. Yeah, they know, they know everything. Well, it's bullshit. Shams, Listen, we're, we're, I would never leave you off a list of favorite people. Why is everyone well, getting on the list except me? You figure that out. I'd never leave you three off of any list. Thank I'm you, Shams. Team so. player. <laughs>